Hi, this is Trevor Conkergood. Welcome to this week's RNK Software Club's video for the week. And the topic is going to be for this week is going to be about learning to use style sheets. And style sheets will control all of the default settings in the program. And it's a little bit like learning to use save to sew in reverse. And so if you guys are ready to get started, let's go ahead and I'll just share my uh, work, my desktop. And um, so notice uh, the design on my screen, the little bunny rabbit. Um, and notice, for example, that it has, you know, a certain kind of underlay and a certain kind of density and a certain kind of stitch. And when you create a design, you know, when you're making something, and if I just, for example, create like a, a little ellipse shape and then um, select my shape and give that like a standard fill, notice that I get what you would call the default settings. And so if you look in the properties box, you'll see that it's a pattern fill and it has a density of 0.5. If you look in the uh, underlay, it has one layer of underlay and it's a perpendicular underlay. If you look in pull compensation, there's none turned on. Those are the default settings for a standard fill when you're using the template called normal or the style sheet called normal. And if you look, up at the top, right up here, it says design number eight, style sheet normal. And there's 15,900 stitches, 14 colors, and this is its size. Well, the important part in the beginning is style normal. Whenever you click new on your workspace, it opens a new empty design, and that design is based upon template normal and so if i create and notice it says up at the top normal and if i create any embroidery and i fill it in with any of the tools there is a default setting there's a default setting for standard fill a default setting for a motif fill for every kind of fill and you'll always get the same settings now you know that if you want to change them you can come in here and say well really what i want is a contour and a parallel and not a perpendicular and you know and change it um and but it's about the defaults what do you get with the first click and of course i said that the style sheet is kind of like using save to sew in reverse well save to sew i'm sure you know and i'm just going to pop back over to this bunny rabbit and save to sew is the tool right here if we click on that it allows us to choose a style sheet what you know what are you sewing it on is basically what it says right and you scroll through and choose what kind of fabric you're sewing it on and if you're sewing this design on fleece and you choose fleece then you do need to turn on the new style settings because if not and you don't check this off you'll simply get the stabilizer suggestions because save to sew is really kind of two parts first part is do you want the software to make changes to your design? And if the answer is yes, then you check this off. And now the software is allowed to change the density, underlay, pull compensation, and really any other settings like stitch angle, et cetera, that it wants to. Um, so now when I say next, it goes to work on the design. Now, while it's working on the design, yes, the, the, the software will suggest the stabilizers, right? So now you get the, you know, hoop up perfect stick tear away and then stick the item down because we said fleece, you know, so it's a hoopless method. And then it says to top it with heat and gone. And that's a recipe, right? And you could, you know, click here to watch a video or click here to get the product information, click here to print it. Um, when you say finish, it asks if you want to save the design because you know that the software has actually made changes and you can have, you know, this is the bunny for fleece versus this is the bunny for a t-shirt. And you'll notice that if you look at this part of the design, that now my Easter egg has, um, you know, different underlay than it did before. And if I was to like, just select that one part, I could see that it has pattern one with density of 0.5. But if I look at the underlay, um, well, I have more than one thing selected. So I, when they're sort of little squares like that, it means there's more than one answer. And it's because I had a run stitch and, you know, it's this, if I click on one segment, 
then it can be specific to that one segment has a full lattice and a contour underlay. And before it had a perpendicular and none of the other two. And so that's the magic of save to sew, but save to sew is at the end of a design when you're finished digitizing. So coming back to the point of today's sort of lesson is if I choose the file drop down menu and then say new, I will get a new design based upon the answers to these two questions. Now, the two questions are what style sheet and what machine format. Well, I'll just tell you that the machine format's not really very important because the final decisions on that kind of get made later anyway when you choose save as you check you pick a format and when you click save it always wants to save to the WAF or whatever one you set in your preferences so this doesn't really matter but above does that where it says style watch click there oh here's all of the styles that were from save to sew and so you can choose one of them you know for example if I choose fleece I digitized and I say, okay, and now it opens a brand new, like empty workspace. So here's the difference. If I make a shape right now, if I just go ahead and take the ellipse tool and draw a big ellipse shape and I select it, and then I click on the standard fill tool. Well, now we get a standard fill that has automatically been updated for fleece you know and it says at the top the style sheet is fleece and therefore every run stitch you know steel stitch and fill stitch that you make will get the default settings for fleece once again you can still select it and come to the properties box and change it but notice that now the default is contour plus full lattice just like if we ran it through save to sew at the end. So here's the chance to tell the software when you start a new design, what you're sewing it on, file new, and then choose, you know, whatever you're choosing to sew it on. Um, let's just try something different. Maybe um, let's do a t-shirt. So where is knit? Sorry, I'm moving it around really quickly. Knit t-shirt. Now, the other question here is I digitized and I didn't digitize. And I like to always say I digitized. Well, you'll know when to use that because you'll know that you did, you know, that you made the design. If it's the store-bought ones that you're opening up and you're going to run save to sew and you didn't make them, then you can choose I didn't. And that's to me, that's kind of the reason to choose. So if I was starting at the beginning, chances are I would choose I did. And then I would say knit t-shirt, I digitized and start it. And so now I get a new design. And once again, if I make that same kind of like shape and just use that same standard fill tool to click on it this time, and actually in each time we got the pattern fill. And in each time we got the density of 0.5, but in each time we got different underlay suggestions. And so now we have a contour plus a perpendicular. And remember, you can always say, well, instead of perpendicular, I want parallel. You always get the final say. I'm just showing you another way to set the defaults. And that's kind of what it is. So now I've got it changed, you know, to however I want it to be. Um, one more thing about all of this that might be interesting. Maybe there's a way that you really love to do it. And um, you can make a preset so that it's always available to you, regardless of what style sheet you choose, the presets will be the same. So if I go, I know I have a lot of presets for my motif fills. Notice when I hover over the motif fill, if I click, I'm gonna get the default motif fill. You know, that's the one that is set in the defaults. But if I right click, I have a whole bunch of different ones that I've made, the double diamond, the Sashiko size 20, the blah, blah, blah. I've made them different sizes and combinations. So this is one that has two different patterns that were mixed together. You can make your own, you know, but the cool thing is if so that way, if you have, you know, another shape and you always want all your shapes to look the same, you can just right click and choose the same preset to give them that exact same kind of style. Um, how do you make your own? Well, make a new style. Maybe I'll decide that this is too small. And so I'll make it 15 instead of 10. And so I have a new version of it. Maybe I'll combine two different things. So instead of, 
you know, what it was before. It's now something new and I might want to reuse this one also. So I make it and then I select it and I come to the tool that I use to create it and I right click. And there's an option to save a preset. You can also use remove presets to clean this mess up if you want to get rid of And you obviously don't have all these presets because these are the ones that Trevor has made, you know, and you can say save preset, make your own, call it, you know, whatever the, um, you know, big deal motif and say, okay. And it's been successfully saved. And now at any time I can select any shape and I can uh, right click on that tool and look for the big, whoops, right click on that tool and look for the big deal and click on it. And that will change it to be that kind. And so I have quite a collection of them. Um, I guess one more thing on that. So here, let's do the double diamond. If you have um, multiple shapes in your design and you want them all to match one of the shapes that you have in the design and you don't necessarily want to make a preset for it, you also have the right click and the ability to say copy settings. This is new in our latest update. And then select any other shape that has the same kind of like, I guess, you know, fill to fill sort of thing. It doesn't work fill to steel, but it will copy and paste. So now I right click and paste settings. So I can make things match that way too. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed uh, today's RNK Software Club's video for the week. Um, until next week, I hope you have a great day. Thanks so much for listening and bye for now.